Let's talk about this book called Senlin Ascends. It is a thing. This is a book that's been making the rounds. I originally saw my friend Ramsey's video on it way back in the day. His channel's Rajathon. I'm gonna link that down below. But lately this resurgence has been happening because Alan from the channel Library of Alexandria has been blowing up just talking about this book in every other video. And Evie, a newer friend of mine here on BookTube, after I lost to her at Book Jeopardy over on Alan's channel, just graciously gifted me a copy of this book and I have now read it and I have a lot of weird disparate thoughts. Senlin Ascends is a very unique experience and I don't think that there is enough praise that could be like brought into something because I read a lot of fantasy on this channel and technically I would qualify this book as fantasy but it does not follow the traditional types of things that a lot of books follow. That's really vague. It's <laughs> Senlin Ascends is the first book in this series called the books of Babel which is a reference clearly it seems to the biblical tower of Babel as what most things allegorically describe as like the pinnacle of secular humanism and the way that the tower of Babel is portrayed in this book is this tower that's so tall that nobody knows how tall it is and each section of the tower is so vast that it's like its own kingdom they're called ringdoms I don't like it it's a pun but what I do like is that this is the type of fantasy story that it doesn't really have magic I guess unless the magic is just ignoring the like regular rules of reality I guess because like the physics of the tower or or like the way that this seems impossible is never really explored at least in book one so one of my favorite things about this story is that it's willing to use its fantastical nature to great degree in ways that like a hard magic system story like Brandon Sanderson like he's all about let's create everything from the ground up and explain how this world could be the way that it is like Mistborn is like that Stormlight is like that this book is like this place is freaking weird and I'm not gonna explain why you're just gonna have to deal with it and I don't mean that in a bad way I mean that in an awesome way like one of the best comparisons I can make of this book in that regard is that it's very similar to Piranesi where it's just freaking magical like there is weird stuff that happens in this world that doesn't make a lot of sense and they don't try to over explain it but that lack of explanation makes it feel more magical and not just stupid. Though I guess disclaimer, if that's what you're looking for, this doesn't seem to be that. Anyway, there's this fabled Tower of Babel that the main character, Senlin, has been like dreaming of, teaching about his entire life. It's been like his life goal to go there and try to ascend the tower. Well, it turns out that he just got married and he and his new bride decide to go to this tower. They have reservations on some higher levels of the tower that they are going to go there and enjoy their honeymoon together. But extremely quickly into the story, we get some of the weirdness like right front and center. And by weirdness front and center, Senlin goes to a store with his wife and even though they had sort of been advised to never let each other out of their sight. Uh, Senlin gets embarrassed because his wife wants to look at some unmentionables for their honeymoon, some some spicy clothes. And Senlin is sort of embarrassed about the prospect. And so he steps away from his wife and then she's gone. He can't find her. Like he stays there looking for her in this, this small area for like five days and she's gone. And then as Sunland starts to talk to other people, it turns out that in this tower, when people come together and they separate from each other, they disappear. Like they immediately, it seems to be a constant thing in this tower. It's part of the magic. And Senlin probably feels a lot like, you know, baby Justin Bieber when he wrote that one song and he's just like, I never should have let you go. I never should have let you go. Oh. And so the plot of the book is that Semlin has to find his wife in this very, very strange world of the Tower of Babel. And I say strange because the book sort of throws convention out the window. Things like, how did his wife disappear so fast? And along with other weird elements that happen, I don't want to spoil anything, they just... They, they seem almost random, and I can understand why people may not like that, but it, it was interesting. It was part of the mystery for me. And one of the draws of this series I mentioned earlier is its unique vibe that I've never felt before because it's, it's, it's just not... It just is unashamed of being strange, and I love the crap out of that. I, I haven't talked about that enough on the channel. I respect 
the mess out of stories and storytellers who are bold and unashamed and willing to take seemingly self-indulgent paths to tell a story or or to tell a self-indulgent story like something that they just they think they they feel like they have to tell even though it may not appeal to people and and people may think that it's odd this is the type of story that i respect the author for for just going for it depending on the types of stories that you like you may or may not like that aspects of this book seem to be almost episodic because as we deal with each of the weird scenarios that Senlin finds himself in there is a bit of a disconnect so instead of everything feeling like a a really progressive quest fantasy it feels closer to like the voyage of the dawn shredder which is very much like this island is this way this island is this way the scenarios in Sinlin Ascends feel like that for a very large portion of the book. I sort of like that vibe, and I think that it makes it easier to like jump in, read a section, jump out, and be okay. But I know that that bothers some people. That's sort of the way that this book is structured. And all of these weird things that happen, they're they're very different, and I I love them. I love the like absurdity of some of them, and like we get very little explanation. But while we get very little explanation, there's a through thread where we get to trace like i wonder what this actually means which is not to say that the entire book is some sort of giant allegory i think there are allegorical elements in the book but it's too much of a story i think i don't think it's i don't think it's this sort of giant metaphor i think we are telling a story here with metaphorical elements but there's also a through plot that that can be traced. It's fine. And they sort of wrap it at the end. It's just genuinely unlike anything else that I've ever read. And for that, I have to give him mad props. Senlin as a character is interesting because he's this very straight laced, shy, um, schoolmaster who has basically taught school his whole life it's weird that he even got married to such like a beautiful and sweet woman everyone thinks that it's strange and so he has to be this like very reserved person who changes a lot over the course of all of the elements of this story and we get to watch that progression happen i think it's really cool and i like the way that he evolves and sort of has to deal with some of the moral struggles with what he has to do to make the plot move forward also another element that makes this book stand out in the current landscape is that it doesn't really try to be grim dark at all in this first entry it's not it's not overly dark it's not overly explicit though there are some like hard-hitting explicit moments of violence that hit out of nowhere and because they're they're relatively rare in the first book they hit really hard when they do hit but the lightness of some of the stuff and the fact that it isn't grim dark even though there's a lot of dark things happening really keeps this level of whimsy high that a lot of modern epic fantasy that I read doesn't have. It doesn't have whimsy. So it almost gives you the feel of a children's book without being a super basic children's book. Not that there's anything wrong with children's books. An apt comparison, I think, for this story is like Alice in Wonderland. Like the sort of acid trip of that story, I think, is something that you could overlay to this book and, and compare a lot of the similar elements of seeming randomness and just magical insanity when it comes to the scenarios and plots that are going on, as well as just the general confusion of the greater whole, like Alice in Wonderland and this share that. Something I don't think I have addressed yet is the prose of the story. I think that it's really, really good and really interesting. And I think that it works really, really well because we're sort of understanding this story through the mind of Senlin and the way that he processes everything that's going on based on his life experience and his proclivities as being this like straight-laced school teacher and the way that he sort of has to figure things out. Sometimes it seems like as someone that reads like darker fantasy, you're like, yo, you have to, you have have to just do some stuff but you have to watch Senlin struggle with this process and the prose itself has some really really quotable moments there's a lot of really really well done thoughts in there and I would just call it really pretty to read this is the sort of book that ends on a cliffhanger it, it very much ends in a way that you have to read book two I think to feel more satisfied but it ends in a way that I very much want to read book two I'm definitely going to continue with this series the end of the story is quite bombastic when the threads of the story come to a head, it is really interesting. And so going into book two, you know exactly sort of the stakes of where we're starting. And they are 
quite high and quite interesting. So yeah, as a whole, I am glad that this book was brought to my attention. I'm glad that a lot of my friends are reading it now. It is a book that if I were going to recommend it, I would recommend it with some caveats. I will even admit that there were parts near the middle to two thirds section where I slowed down. I don't know whether I was just in a funk or whether it was the book just sort of, there are there is a thing that happens sometimes in stories where when my brain goes, we could stop here and this could be the end and it doesn't have to continue, where I I find it really hard sometimes to maintain the level of like interest that I had at parts of the story. There are a couple sections where I feel like, yeah, the story could end here potentially. But honestly, with the experience that I was having reading this, I was sort of in a reading funk myself. So there were parts that were slower to me, even though this really isn't that long of a book. But as I said, once I pushed through those parts, it was great. I think maybe the episodic sort of feel of it, like I, like I said before, may have made it easy to, to fall off a little bit. Regardless, like I said, I would recommend this book to you if the things that I've talked about don't seem like they would detract too hard from your enjoyment. I personally enjoyed it a lot. I think a lot of people would enjoy it a lot, especially if you're looking for something that breaks the mold on the traditional things like this is not pro this is probably not like a lot of things that you've read before especially if you read mostly epic adult fantasy like I do have you read Senlin Ascends please let me know in the comments down below has Alan enticed you has anyone else mentioned this book and made it seem like something you would want to read do you disagree with any of my conclusions or thoughts on what sort of was in this book please let me know in the comments down below if you like this video review please leave a thumbs up on the video and if you'd like to see more reviews from me in the future please remember to subscribe and if you hit the bell you'll get notified anytime I post a new video. If you'd like to talk about this book or anything else book related or otherwise with me, there is a Discord link down below where anybody can join and we have a lot of fun over there in that Discord. If you'd like to support the channel financially, there's a link to a Patreon down below as well as a merch store link where there's like some t-shirts and stuff that I made. I hope you like this video. I hope you're having a great day and I hope to see you again soon in the future in another video. Until next time, goodbye. No one never get enough. Always looking out tired of sleep. No one ever get enough. If it don't show up, I might get fired. Sleep. No one ever get enough. Always looking out tired of sleep. No one ever get enough. If it don't show up, I might get fired.